In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Christ has ascended on high, from whence he shall come. Begin by reading Acts chapter 20, verses 16 to 18, and 28 to 36, and then John chapter 17, verses 1 to 13. You might well ask yourself, what is it that God and the Church wants for you? Now, often I'm asked to pray for all sorts of things. That somebody should pass their exams, they should pass their driving test, they should get a better house, they should live more comfortably, get a better job, and so on. All sorts of things like this. But, you know, nowhere in the Scriptures do we find anything remotely like that. It doesn't seem to be what is really uppermost in God's mind for us. And even when the Lord says, my peace I give to you, the people that he gave that peace to in that upper room that we read about in the Gospel over Pascha, almost all of them suffered the most appalling death. Or they lived in great exile for a very large proportion of their lives. You look back and look at the saints and see how much they struggled and it hurt them to be a follower of Christ. So what actually is it that God wants for you? Well we find this in today's reading, John chapter 17, 1 to 13, that great prayer of the Lord that spells out really what it is that Christ is hoping more than hoping that Christ is commanding upon you. Okay, and what is it? Well, the first thing is this, that you should be kept in God's name and be one with each other as Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one in each other as well. And then secondly, that in this being kept in God's name, he wishes to give to you eternal life. Actually give it to you. Let you have it. He says, well, this is eternal life. To know God the Trinity. To know God himself. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And to be part of that knowing God. An amazing thing and that is eternal life. You see the way that that implies a huge relationship between you and God, the creator of everything that is. And then the Lord says that you should be guarded as well. Guarded against what? Against Satan who wants to steal your life away from you. Not give you eternal life but take it from you and make it impure, imperfect, sinful, polluted, as opposed to being pure and one with God. And then the Lord says, guarded like that, that you should have his joy fulfilled in you. Now that joy is the joy of knowing God the Trinity. It is not the joy of having a swimming pool. It's not the joy of having Cadillac. It's not the joy of having designer clothing. These things will pass away and the time will come when you'll realise also that they are futile things. They're not interesting really. They are toys that people play with. But to know God, to have eternal life in God, is something that lasts forever, outside time. Now the Church also wishes you to have these things too. You know, if you have a look to see what St Paul says about these things, it says that he laboured day and night to make sure that we, the Church, back then in Ephesus, were not led astray. He worked with his own hands. He didn't invite anybody else to pay him. He looked after himself. He sacrificed his own labour so that we should have the truth. And having that truth, the manifestation of God in the world, 
that we should have that eternal life. He told us to be alert against all falsehood, to keep that faith pure, to be so enthusiastic like he was, enthusiastic for the faith itself. And he prayed that our faith would be built up and that we would receive an inheritance amongst all those people who were being sanctified by God. In other words, those who were having eternal life. So what does God want for you? God wants you to know him. God wants you to be living eternally with him, in him, for him, and so on. And that's really what the Ascension is partly about, isn't it? Christ ascends so the Holy Spirit can come and the Holy Spirit can lead us into all truth and that truth is God the Holy Trinity. Your holy prayers. God bless you and keep you. Amen.